Good morning, superstars. Today we're going to be talking about dividing shapes or partitioning shapes into halves, fourths, and thirds. This is really our introduction to fractions, which are fun to work with and fun to kind of um, play around with. They're fun visually, so I think that you guys are going to enjoy this. Um, the first thing I want to show you is our anchor chart about unit fractions. So all fractions are based off of one whole. So if you can see here, I have two examples of a whole. One whole circle, colored in orange, and one whole rectangle in white. So each of these is its own separate whole. On its own, it is complete. Neither shape is split into any parts. One whole, one whole. From there, we'll shift over to halves. So halves are two equal shares of something. So two equal shares of this circle or two equal shares of this rectangle. Thirds are when you split the whole into three equal parts. One, two, three. Each piece is one third, one third, one third. And lastly is fourths. The circle is broken up into four equal shares, and the rectangle is also broken up into four equal shares. The key word here is that each part is equal or the same. The parts have to be the same size in order to be fractional parts. So we're only going to work here with wholes, halves, thirds, and fourths. You might hear this language when you're making um, uh, you know, a recipe when you're baking cookies or something like that, you know, uh, three fourths of a cup, something to that effect. So being paying attention to those fractions that you're hearing in your daily life. Or let's split the cookie in half, right? I get one half, you get one half. So those are the times that this is applicable and you're going to hear that over and over and over. Let's go into our learning for the day with the packet. So in the first section, they want you to look at equal parts versus unequal parts. So we need to be able to determine if a shape has equal shares or unequal shares. So let's first look at this shape. This rectangle has, is one whole, right? In, in its entirety is one whole. It's broken into four parts. Are the parts equal or unequal? Meaning are they the same size or not the same size? How you figure this out is by asking yourself a really simple question. Pretend this is a favorite food or something like that. Pretend this is a chocolate bar. If you got any one of these pieces, would you be satisfied? My answer would be yes, because it would be the same as the people I'm sharing with. Whereas if you look at this and pretend it's a chocolate bar, what if you're the person who's getting the share that's this big and your friend is getting the share that's this big. Would you be happy then? This is the difference between equal parts, blue, and unequal parts, green. Let's look at another example. Let's look at this red example. Are these two red pieces the same? If you said, yes, they're equal, you are correct. What about these pink pieces? Would you want to be the friend that got this piece of chocolate instead of this piece of chocolate? Me neither. These are unequal parts. All right. Now, you try. I'm going to show you a shape, and I want you to shout out at home equal or unequal. I hope you said unequal, Miss Allie. This piece is much smaller than this piece and this one. What about this? If you said equal, you're on it. These are all the same. All of these fourths are the same. Let's look at a couple of these triangles. Let's start off with this one, this pink one. Are those shares equal? Yes, the pink is equal. If you were to fold the triangle in half on that middle line, they would overlap each other with um, with nothing to spare. So that pink triangle has equal parts. What about the blue one here? Think about this as a piece of chocolate in this triangle shape. 
Would you want this piece of chocolate or this one? I'd want this one. It looks a little bit bigger to me. This is unequal. And how about lastly, this red triangle? Are these, is this the same as this? If you said no, you're correct. This is also unequal. Last but not least is this rectangle. Are those two pieces the same or equal? Yes, they are. Nice job, second grade. Now, into your packet. This is, so that will be just learned is going to help you with that first question in the let's try. This is the second question in the let's try. They want you to partition and shade each of these shapes. It is important to know that each shape represents one whole. So one whole circle, one whole rectangle, and one whole square. Let's start here with the circle. We need to partition it into two halves. Halves have two pieces to complete a whole. So I'm gonna draw a line straight down the center of my circle. Be really precise, really careful when you're doing that. A line straight down the middle should make this side the same as this side, equal. They want us to shade in two halves, so each side should be shaded in. Let's shade it in. All right. Two halves equals one whole, right? If the whole circle is shaded, each half is shaded, two holes gives us, two halves gives us one whole. Good job. All right, now the next one. Pay attention to what they're asking us to do. They want us to partition the shape into thirds. They want us to shade in only two of those thirds. So I'm thinking thirds. I know I need to have three equal parts. One, two, three. Two lines will get you two, um, three thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds. Now that our shape has been broken up into thirds, we need to shade in only two of those thirds. I'm gonna shade in the first two. One, two, two thirds. Notice that one third gets left unshaded. Why? Because it's only asking us for two thirds. If it wanted the whole three-thirds shaded in, it would have said three-thirds. All right, and I apologize if this is a tiny bit off. Ignore that. All right, lastly, we have two-fourths that need to be shaded. Our first step is to sh uh, partition into fourths. Fourths means four equal parts. There's a couple ways you could do this. You might draw a line straight down the center and then across here. I'm gonna make a big old X, one this way, one this way. That's also a way to partition in fourths. Either way you do it, they want you to shade in only two of those fourths. So I'm gonna go ahead and color mine red. Two of my fourths are now shaded. Hmm, are you noticing something? I am. I'm seeing that half of the shape is shaded. Therefore, two fourths is the same as one half. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let's move on to question three. It says split the pizza so that Shane, Raul, and John all have an equal share. Label each piece with their names. Well, this is kind of simple because they did divide the circle for you, right? They, they split that fake pizza up already. So our job, now that we see that these parts are all equal, is to label. One piece for Shane, one for Raul, and one for John. Nice. Each piece of pizza is the same size. All friends are happy. Now. What fraction of the pizza was eaten by each of the boys? The key word there is each. Hmm. How many friends are there? One, two, and three. So there's three friends, one whole, and 
it's broken up into three different equal shares. So it's broken up into thirds. If each boy only got one slice of this pizza, they've eaten one third of the pizza. So each friend ate only one third of the pizza. The last question says, what fraction of the pizzas did the boys eat all together? So the key word is all together. In total, what fraction did they eat? So if, imagine that all the slices, one, two, and three are gone. They ate three thirds of the pizza. Three thirds is the same as one whole. So they ate three thirds or one whole. Any number like that, so it's three thirds, four fourths, two halves, one whole, right? So if they ate all three thirds, that means the entire pizza, the whole pizza is gone. Thanks for listening along today, my friends. I hope that you had fun with this. Go back and review if you need to before you jump into the problem set portion.